And uh, what about Arm Holdings? So they're a semiconductor company uh, providing processors for the iPhone and basically the chip that carries out operations set by the computer program. Right. So the the actual Apple's processors, are, I think, are really interesting because you have Arm, which is a British company, and they design the chip architecture and they license, and then they also design how to like make the chips. And then they license this out to the other companies to actually go and implement and to use. But they have a couple of different types of licenses. They have these kind of stock licenses for very specific processors. But what kind of what they also have is is an instruction set license. So you basically get access to the underlying architecture. So you can actually really develop on top of what they've done and innovate and really cater a chip's performance to your needs in terms of you know power, consumption, power efficiency, like just actual computing power. And that's what the high level people, high level companies do, like Qualcomm, Apple, Samsung. They all have instruction set licenses that allow them to really differentiate their chips. And you know, because before that, Apple was using pretty standard off the shelf parts, you know, that were made by like other companies. But with the A4 starting in 2010, they put their own branding on it, and like they're really differentiating. And then now all of a sudden they have like 64 bit processors, which are like desktop class. And you know, they've done so much on their chips in the past five years that it's just insane. Like they've caught everyone on guard with how advanced they're. And they, they barely even talk about it too. I mean, in classic kind of Apple way, they they don't talk too much about the tech specs of it. They just say, it's so much faster. <laughs> because you don't really need to know much. You don't need to know the clock speed or... Eyes start to glaze over a little bit. Yeah, right? exactly. Which a lot of people do. And, and it's, a, it's a big branding strength that they can just be like, hey, it's, it's just a ton faster and it's desktop class. I mean, it's comparable to like low-end desktops, but we're talking about a phone processor, so it's still pretty impressive in my opinion. Mm. But it, the, from a supply chain perspective, it's also pretty interesting because you have this British company that licenses it out to Apple, who's in California, and then Apple goes and they do all their design work on top of that. And then they go and they have contract manufacturing on the chip side. So Samsung makes the chips for them. They recently added Taiwan Semiconductor as a chip maker. So and, and those are based in Korea, and they're, they're in, um, obviously, Taiwan Semiconductor is in Taiwan. Uh, Samsung makes some of the chips in Austin, Texas. So you have, you know, all, like just for this one chip, which is obviously a very important component, it comes from all over the world, like in terms of it, its own value chain. And then and they also license the GPU technology from another British company, Imagination. So, I mean, you have... You just have this wide collection of companies in geographical areas where they have to come together just for this one processor to come together, which is an incredibly important part of the device. Yeah, the sheer number of moving parts that go into Apple's supply chain is kind of baffling. Um, if you want more of a taste of this, listeners, if you Google um, Apple Supplier List 2015, the company makes available their top 200 suppliers. And so some of them are within the same company but different addresses. But they estimate that their top 200 suppliers comprise about 97% of uh, the procurement expenditures for materials, manufacturing, and assembly of products. So, uh, you know, that is across all their product lines, but that gives you a pretty good sense of all of the different suppliers that wind up going into these um, Asian contract manufacturers. 